had bought and sold the mini speedy hl multiple times so i did have to send that bag back but that was quite frustrating i don't even know what to do with it it's just like a cute little pro i should just put it here to be honest like where can i put it i should just put it i just put it here hey guys welcome to my channel i'm jess okay so today i wanted to talk about my biggest fails ever on youtube well my <laughs> My unboxing fails. These are bags that I bought that I ended up getting rid of, returning, sending back or selling on because they were epic fails. Over the years, I have bought and sold many bags. Yes, along my handbag journey, I've ha had many ups and downs. And well, today I wanted to talk about the downs of buying handbags. Sometimes it doesn't work out and things that you should be aware of, maybe when shopping pre-loved. Sometimes you have high expectations of a bag, but it just doesn't turn out to be the right one. I remember a few years ago, I was really into the Chanel 2.55 bag, you know, the reissue of the classic bag that Coco Chanel designed with the Mademoiselle Turnlock and I did have one from the 19A collection in this gorgeous green color. That was probably one of the most stunning bags I've owned from Chanel but I did have this little obsession with collecting things and I went out to seek another mini 2.55 bag and I was aware that prior to like 2012 they actually used to make mini 2.55s with a double flap which was very similar to the uh bigger classic styles and i really wanted to seek out this particular style because it's quite rare and i just thought there was more detail and quality in the older pieces so i stumbled across this beautiful bag on ebay i ended up purchasing it i think i've spent spent um maybe under just four thousand australian dollars you know not cheap and i unboxed it on my channel and was very pleased with the way the color looked it was a metallic kind of coppery silvery tone i loved the way it looked it was actually really stunning and a lot of you guys are going to be thinking was the metallic peeling what was wrong with this bag did i not like how it was so crumpled in the front because looking back at some of that footage i'm like geez it was actually a bit worse for wear and i think that some of the hardware was a little bit chipped as well which i didn't mind as much i did see that in the photos unfortunately the ebay seller didn't show her the uh biggest flaws in the bag which happened to be some pop stitches which i discovered later i found in some of the quilted squares some of the stitches were missing and this is something that is actually quite significant uh wear because if you took this back to chanel it would actually be quite hard to repair it was quite unsettling and i was quite disappointed Luckily, I did dispute the case on eBay and I did talk to the seller and they agreed to give me a refund. So I did have to send that bag back, but that was quite frustrating because um, it was not listed that it had pop stitches. Maybe I should have zoomed in on the pictures closer, but yeah, I would just say, guys, if you are buying pre-loved, zoom into the pictures and check if there are pop stitches, you know, some sort of wear and tear that you wouldn't be happy with because pop stitches for me is a real deal breaker. Another bag I remember buying, which was something that wasn't uh my favorite was a mini speedy hl from louis vuitton and i picked this up pre-loved now i was going on a bit of a louis vuitton um kick back then i had bought and sold i kind of go through phases where i buy a lot of louis vuitton bags and then i sell them and then i buy them and i sell i just i always feel like i have this love-hate relationship with louis vuitton there are elements of it which i'm like obsessed with but then i always get disappointed by like either the quality or just I get over the styles because some of the styles I tend to go for are a bit loud and just not easy to style. So I had a few phases where I was really getting into the Murakami collections and I had bought and sold the Mini Speedy HL multiple times and I decided I missed it again, yet again, and I ended up picking it up for under a thousand dollars from a seller. But when I unboxed it, um, I did actually see in the pictures that it had this flaw, but a lot of the mini speedy HLs in the blonde color or the white color have bleeding on the sides because there was this defect with the white multicolor that sometimes the red lining will bleed onto the white outer and it kind of leaves these like weird stains on the bag but the one i had purchased i got it for a really good deal but that's because it had these really big red stains on each side and i kind of thought that i could let it go because i knew that it was a defect with like 
almost all the white multicolor bags and the Vaketa leather on that bag was like perfect so I feel like with the mini HL it's either the Vaketa leather is just wrecked or the canvas is just like has the bleeding problem so it's very actually it's actually very hard to find a really good condition white multicolor speedy hl anyways um i didn't want to pay you know sometimes i see them for like four thousand dollars which is crazy i didn't want to pay that much for this kind of bag so i ended up settling for this quality of uh bag but then i just couldn't move past the staining on the sides i just thought it looked so bad and i really tried to think about maybe i could repaint the bag um or something like that fix the sides but i couldn't bear to do that either because then i thought well it's just like altering the whole bag and it's just i don't know it's not something that i wanted to necessarily um accept either so i ended up sending the bag back despite I guess trying to settle for um, less that, than I would have wanted. You know, sometimes when you're looking for a good deal, you'll compromise on the quality of the bag or the, the state that it's in. And I'm okay. I have some exceptions sometimes, like if it's a bit saggy or it has a scratch. But when it's like significant like that, where it's like big stains or something like that, I sometimes can't move past it. Or as I said, like pop stitches, I can't accept that. And that was a fail. I, I sent it back and I did regret... Um, kind of lowering my standards for like what I would accept buying because yeah I got sucked into the deal and in my head I convinced myself that I needed that bag. Next bag that was a fail was a Loewe bag actually that I purchased from the website. This was from the House Moving Castle collection and you know this was the very last Studio Ghibli collaboration Loewe uh, did and I of course had to snag something. I was crazily stalking the website of the launch day and I was lucky enough to score a lunar bag in with the calcifer um, leather marquetry on the front and I of course was just obsessed so I was so excited to unbox this bag. I ended up unboxing it and you know at the time I was very happy with the bag. I was so excited. I guess I was blinded by um, you know the hype around the collection and just at the time, I also had a really cute uh, puzzle bag and, you know, I was really feeling it. I loved it. But upon inspecting it after I filmed, I noticed it had some glue residue on it and I did wear it once and I didn't, I just took it to a cafe and went back home and I noticed that um, I, I looked up at the bag and some of the stitches were popping on the calcifer um, little uh, design on the front because it did have the leather marquetry which is like the leather glued onto in inlaid into the leather but they had also stitched around it for some reason which was interesting because in previous collections they'd never done stitching around the leather marquetry as well and this stitching wasn't very um well done I would say it was like very tiny and it looked like the tension was too like tight on it because a lot of these stitches were like either let's like look like they were gonna break and then there were a few stitches that had already broken which really concerned me because um yeah I didn't want that like to start happening on more areas of the bag not to mention that it had like little bits of glue everywhere which looked a bit dodgy and I know you can sometimes like remove some of that glue residue but I just thought that the quality of the bag was not what I was willing to accept honestly for what I paid for it it was several thousands of dollars and so I did send it back and said, told them like it's not good quality it's the stitching is popped and I ended up getting a refund so I was a little bit disappointed by that um because it was a gorgeous bag there are some bags that I've seen new in the store that still look incredible so perhaps it was just that collection let me know if you've ever had issues with the Bay because in general they tend to be awesome like they have amazing leather and I loved their, their bag designs everything is just so cute I absolutely love the Bay, but yeah that was a bit disappointing so yeah, that was a bit of a fail as well. I did order one other thing on the Loewe website prior to ordering this Luna bag, and that was a elephant crossbody bag, and it had uh, butterfly wings. Now, this particular bag was a little bit of a fail um, upon unboxing it. You know, it was actually a relatively good price. I think it was like 1100 1200 So I kind of got sucked into the lower price point for a designer bag. And I thought the butterfly wings were just adorable. When I tried this on crossbody, I noticed that the butterfly wings were just like not 
that cute on it because it looked really cute when the butterfly wings were down and you could see the blue but when the black part was just like sitting upwards it kind of just looked awkward and it didn't really showcase the cuteness of the butterfly wings so I always was trying to like make the butterfly wings fold down but that would always go back up and you couldn't even see like the blue inside of the butterfly wings so I felt like the design was not really well thought out because in the pictures on the website you could see that the butterfly wings were folded down but when I received it the butterfly wings were just stuck upwards and there was no way that it would be able to go down like it was just even if I forced it down it was always fling back up um, and it just looked it was very underwhelming not to mention that the size was not it was like a mini really mini elephant size I did end up sending that one back because I was not loving it on me and I didn't love how the butterfly wings sat really awkwardly. Um, it was lucky I sent it back because not long after that I had a friend uh, reach out to me and sold me this yellow elephant from Lueve for a really good deal. Um, and this one is slightly bigger and it doesn't have those like random butterfly wings. So this one is actually um, a lot more practical. That being said, I literally never wear this bag. I don't know. I, I don't even know what to do with it it's just like a cute little pro I should just put it here to be honest like where can I put it I should just put it I just put it here it should just be a cute prop on my shelf but yeah to be honest that one's a bit of a foul too because I never wear it because I guess because it's yellow I don't love yellow to be honest so it was the color the butterfly wings were awkward mainly and yeah I don't know but I just love the Loewe animal bags they are just so damn stinking cute. My last fail was actually a pre-loved Chanel bag which I picked up uh, for a really good deal. I think I got it for like $1,300. It was the Chanel Petite Chopatote in this gorgeous pink. I think I picked this up from a Facebook group and it did have significant wear on the corners and the bottom of the bag and when I um, kind of unbox this I loved it but I did kind of wish that I could fix the wear on the bag because it was kind of ugly and the inside was kind of dirty as well so I ended up taking it to a bag spa and then I ended up unboxing that result on my channel of it fully sparred I think I paid about $400 to get a full bag restoration and unfortunately they couldn't properly clean the inside of the bag which was my main concern so I was disappointed by that but most importantly, they completely changed the texture and color of the bag. And I actually didn't ask them to completely re-dye the whole bag. I just asked them to touch up the corner. But unfortunately, they fully re-dyed the whole bag. And it just ended up being a completely different color and texture to what it was originally. And although it did look cute, it still looked adorable, to be honest. Now, looking back at the footage, in real life, the texture was completely different. And it was quite disappointing uh, that I... I was really, I really regretted giving it to the bag spa and perhaps I should have, um, I don't know, I, I thought they kind of got my message but it didn't work out and I sent an email saying, you know, I wasn't aware you are going to completely recolor the bag and they just said, oh well, and it didn't really work out and I just wasn't very happy with the result of the bag spa and I ended up relisting it on Facebook and I listed it for a really reasonable price because I disclosed, you know, it's been bag spa and all that and someone else ended up buying it so I had to sell it on and yeah it was still very usable condition it was durable but just you know have you guys ever ever had a bad bag spa experience let me know because I don't often take my bags to the bag spa um I have a few times but I've, I've never I don't tend to do full bag restorations because I always feel like it comes back not the same but I have seen amazing bag restorations like um I have seen people had their bag back from the back side and it's like gleaming and it's clean and it looks beautiful but it's really hit and miss sometimes with whoever is like dealing with your bag and all that and sometimes it can just be very disappointing when it comes back and it's like a completely different color or something anyways um yeah let me know actually guys if you've had a bit of a bag spa nightmare because that could be a, a, like a really cool video series just like seeing before and afters and stuff i just love that stuff uh but thanks for listening to my video today um let me know um if you want me to do more videos like this or maybe i can even do my most successful handbag unboxings next i think that would be a cool idea as well um anyways i'll talk to you guys on my next one bye